Yo, yo, it's ODB. This is OLP. This is issue 94 of Mini Trucking Magazine, October 99. World Premier Customs across the top. Mini Trucking and Custom Compacts, Cutting Edge Electronics issue. West Coast Customs Laid Runner. This is really an iconic cover. I love the colors. We actually have a behind the scene photo, rest in peace, uh, that came from Alex, the Alex Who. And Alex and Ryan Franklinhouse, who owned this Forerunner, were really good friends. And uh, again, rest in peace, Alex. We lost Alex a year ago. Uh, the world did. And uh, he graciously enough had shared a behind the scene photo of this very cover. Now, this was Wes Allison's 17th credited cover. If you guys recall, uh, he actually shot all the covers that he shot. He's not even halfway done yet. Uh, he was the sole person that was credited, um, you know, with that, uh, you know, with the, the photo credit. Alex, who my understanding was there. So uh, that was cool that he had shared that photo. And um, the other thing that I like, like about this one is it has Colorado Custom Wheels, my favorite wheel company. And uh, the cool thing about that was these are the Mystic Wheels, which I freaking absolutely love. And um, they, you know, Colorado Custom, they were on a ton of covers, including this one. So now the other thing, ironically enough, uh, Wes's first cover was, if you remember back, it was Ryan's Blazer. That was issue 59, November 96. So pretty cool stuff. Um, and then for those scoring at home, it was the 11th. Uh, cover truck or SUV uh, to have Colorado custom wheels. So very iconic. You see the bridge in the background. I've talked enough about the cover. Uh, let's jump right in. So you got the BF Goodrich ad. We were accustomed to seeing this. It's a damn good issue. Like I said, there's some gold in this one. You can see, give or take, four or five, six features. Uh, they do call out the cover truck there. That was something that trucking always did. Trucking would put like a little um, thing in their table of contents typically to kind of call out the cover truck so you could kind of flip right to it if you wanted to. Of course, they wanted you to look at this front and back because of the advertisers, of course. And again, you see Ryan Fringling Houses of West Coast Customs built the world's first completed and show-ready forerunner. Crazy to think uh, there's a good amount of forerunners in the scene now. Not a lot, but you can see that iconic photo right there. Does anybody know what bridge that is? Um, chime in if you do. Uh, you can see a Mazda and a Sport Compact. So, uh, again, if you, I've said this before, if you have any behind the scenes photos or any intel on these issues that we miss, uh, please email us ourlifestylepodcast at gmail.com. It's that easy. And um, we would appreciate it. Now, something I just noticed, and maybe I didn't notice this before, this um, this photo is in color, so we start to get into more color. Uh, I don't recall. I want to say they were always black and white up till that point as far as any of the editorials, but um, that's just something that just popped in my head. That's just the way my brain is. One step beyond, I remember seeing this. I mentioned it in show coverage. This thing was always cool to me, just a cool color, rocking the center lines, which were my first wheels on my uh, first custom wheels purchased on my S10. But uh, this was a truck that you would see, obviously, in uh, show coverage. It was uh, Cliff, S-T-U-T-S-O-N, I believe it was his name. Pretty cool. You got the Godfather ad, and I I want to I want to get to the all color issues, but you see again uh, more color I think, but we still were technically in black and white. Uh, here, ironically enough, Lance was the editor at the time, and this is bitten by Cobra. He talks about MT News from the inside out, and then you can see Project Purgatory right there. So he was actually giving an update on it. And um, this truck, I believe, is still around. That's, I think I remember seeing it online. I think someone has it. You guys can kind of chime in. But um, shout out to Charles Armstrong, of course, good friends with Lance. I was texting with Charles this week, and he said to tell everyone hello. 
and uh, he's doing the damn thing. He liked uh, some of our Christmas cards. We didn't get a chance to send them out to everyone. We only had a few, but we did uh, use the Time Machine artwork and our Christmas cards. And uh, again, thanks to all the support. I wish I had time. I had to handwrite those things uh, to a few of our sponsors and some of our folks that we worked with with the artwork this year. So again, uh, shout out to Lan or excuse me, Charles. The Dream Catcher. So we saw this one in the table of contents. You can see really an awesome Mazda there. You can rack, you see the rag top. And this was a Vaughn Somerset of Bothell, Washington. So shout out to Mini Garage, Jeff up in that way. There's a lot of these Mazdas. Uh, they were up there for a long time. Uh, really killing it, if you will, from a mini truck perspective. But uh, this thing was dope. 16s back in the day. And uh, shout out to everyone, not you know, not only Jeff from Mini Garage, but uh, all of the, the kinfolk from the Pacific Northwest. This was East Coast Customs, Southeast, Southeastern Nationals. Now, I did go to this show one time, and I'll talk about it in the future. A buddy of mine debuted his truck, I think technically at this show, if I remember correctly. It was the first time I saw it. I think it was a debut. Uh, but this show was uh, was a popular one. This one was in Jacksonville. The year I went, it was actually at yeah, it was at the stadium, which for a while was known as Altel Stadium. Um, that's always fun to think back to some of the NFL stadiums. How many times they uh, changed their name? Here you have Jimmy Graham of Jimmy's Run Customs. That is for those that don't know. That is what his Nissan Hardbody looked like before it was totally redone, and then it ended up with Joe Greaves shooting it, and it landed on the cover of. You guessed it, street trucks. The truck is never seen again after Jimmy sold it. We've looked for it. If you know uh, where the the truck is at, of course, it does not look like that. We'll have to cover that issue in the future. Here is um, the famous Isuzu, the rear engine truck, Figment. Had to think for a second. Now, I was sworn to secrecy, but my friend, the real, I said the real Matt Smith, did share the news with other folks this year. Uh, I can tell you my understanding is this thing is home or it's coming back to Florida. So more to come on it. Of course, was on the cover uh, when the real Matt Smith was sitting in it with an FSU hat. I mentioned that many, many moons ago. Uh, and then it was later featured. So definitely a staple. Okay, so this famous photo was taken by Recipes Courtney Hallowell. Of course, it's Sideshow, a.k.a. Ahead of You, and his dad's cab over, if I remember correctly. Um, this truck is argu arguably many of our favorite trucks, you know, one of the, the greats built. And uh, this was the famous uh, ad for KMC Wheels. And we'll be talking about KMC Wheels in our next episode. So, again, tune into OLP via any podcast app. Just search OLP. And uh, you can see here the famous wheels. Now, uh, again, I know I gravitated towards this ad. It was kind of cool. This was a prelude of what they did. They actually ran, I believe, the same ad in uh, Street Trucks. If I remember correctly, it might have just been on one page, though. But Courtney shot this, and I do believe it ran as the COE ran as a feature in Street Trucks. Again, you got to think, this was around the time that... Um, that those guys were, you know, doing the damn thing over there. Um, and again, this was October 99. So uh, Street Trucks had been out. Their first issue was August 99. So um, for whatever, you know, basically whatever happened, they, you know, they, these guys ran it. Uh, Courtney may have, you know, worked the deal for KMC to run it as an ad, but it was cool. It did appear in both mags. Here's Mike Boyer's 87 Mazda B2000. Construction Zone, and this was Jeremy Bonnell's 96 Honda Civic, and this was in an era when the limits were really being pushed uh, with guys running, you know, you could see a crazy bag set up in the front. Um, things were just really, really starting to get crazy uh, with guys running uh, bags on these, doing different strut setups, and then, of course, trying to get them as low as possible. Again, more color you're seeing here. Here's the uh, 562 next to KMC. I've kind of mentioned 562. I, I want to say that was a lower line. Okay, 
So although I've said many times that I have a hard time making out all these Ford Rangers because some of them were one way, then they got redone. This one, I can tell you, uh, I know inside and out. Uh, we ran Tony Audia. We ran this famous Ford Ranger on our, what we called Live Life Topless, although this truck wasn't topless. It was basically on our, what we called the uh, Sega Outrun uh, artwork. We might have a few of those left on our website, ourlifestylepodcast.com. But of course, this truck was redone with uh, with no topper. So no topper gang, if you will, on the next one. One of the baddest built. Uh, we have shared a video of this. Uh, you can look up uh, Tony Audia, A-U-D-I-A on Instagram. It's like Car Caddy, I think is his Instagram. Uh, if you look at what we've tagged him in, um, we, we've tagged him in a couple of videos, including Mini Nats 2000. Um, some of that awesome video, and we always give credit on that stuff. But check this out. This is when it was a walkthrough, for those that didn't know. And check out that sound system, the wall, if you will. Super awesome. Of course, Jody Hall. Uh, Tony had hit me up. Uh, and I don't know if I shared the photo um, after we did the Chop Shop episode. Or excuse me, the Drop Shop the drop shop episode and Tony had shared um, a photo when his truck, I think was there uh, getting the work done. And um, you can see right here kind of talks about some of that. Uh, I do show some of this again, you could bump it to 4k, you know, typically most of you guys have like I do your setting on uh, automatic, but uh, if you ever need to, to pull screenshots from this, you can, that's one of the other reasons why I do it. Uh, this was Fat Ford, technically down low and ready uh, for show. And again, many of our, uh, many of us, one of our favorite trucks ever built. The crazy thing was, as clean as this thing was, tucking lugs, front and rear, billet grill, crazy, super clean tweed interior. It gets redone, of course, and it does run in street trucks. It was shot I th in the exact same spot. My buddy's truck was shot. And uh, my buddy lives about um, five minutes away from me. We'll hopefully get him on one day and talk about his famous truck. Third annual Custom Nationals. So Dreams in Motion put on another killer show. You got an Isuzu Space Cab there. And check this out. There is Dan's Tulo Taco from Escondido. Now again, uh, D Dan and I have has chatted. We are going to have Dan on. A lot of us think this was Gendro's truck. Uh, I talked about it with Gendro, but this was, um, you could see they're now owned by Brandt of, of course, uh, Brandt that owns Graphic Disorder. So this was the first time in print. And you could think, I mean, it wasn't that long ago. It was on the cover and then boom, uh, Dan had sold it. So, you know, I'd like to talk to Dan in the future about uh, how that went down. Speaking of, you can see the truck right there. So check out that Mazda. A lot of cool stuff. Uh, a lot of times, in, including this one, I did not look back at this um, issue at all. I try to just go right into it. Um, I, of course, I do have my database I can always refer to with uh, a lot of information. But I uh, certainly appreciate you guys kind of tuning in here. A new lease on Lowered Life, uh, laid runner. And again, just a really cool layout. This was super awesome. I think the color in the background, uh, you had your title above it on the left, kind of up you know, where the bridge is at, your front three-quarter shot. Again, those Colorado Custom Mystic wheels. And then uh, about six photos across the bottom. Super clean. I've always liked the four runners. I really have. And um, there's been some really nice ones built over the years this is the one i think set it off for many of us and uh that was always cool too because being that it was an suv you could really you know put a lot of uh, subs and stuff in the back almost kind of giving you the the you know the the camper shell type feel right there but um the photo that alex had sent to us i've shared it in the past i've tagged wes i tagged the alex who and uh, you could see Wes in it just briefly, but uh, it was taken pretty, if I remember correctly, it was taken kind of far back, but it was pretty cool how the bridge is in there and uh, just super sick. Uh, you could see Ryan right here driving it, so they did some rolling shots. As far as we know, they're rolling shots, I would assume so. 
And uh, I've spoken to Ryan on the phone in the past. We are going to try to get Ryan on. He he is aware that we want to have him on, and we just got to kind of make that happen. You can see here, 18s when they were big. Ryan's incredible runner sport. The most luxurious appointments. Da, 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 da. So, yeah. And then check this out. One of the first vehicles, if not the first, that we see in the magazine that has monitors. They won't even say TVs. Were they ever really televisions? Monitors in the headrest. But it does sound better when you say, yo, dog, I got TVs in the headrest. That's what Mike needs in the Mazda. Let's be honest. If he could do that in Banana Rama Hammock, I think he could get the points he needs. Let Mike know, Ed. TVs in the headrest, dog. Okay, so this was Water Mania. This truck, the first show I went to, I got a chance to see this truck. Uh, I still have photos of it, man. It was just insane. Channeled, laid out. You can see pretty cool here. All the work inside the bed. Water Mania. Now, here's Randy. I talked to Randy last night. Um, again, I think I mentioned this recently. Randy's truck was body dropped by Matt Torgerson at The Shop. And um, this had the Slam Diam tag on it. I always remember that. And uh, Randy had all the ladies on the Nissan. Can't wait to see what Randy's coming out with next. I wish I knew. I wish I knew. So uh, Mini Market, again, back to black and white. The Reds ad. If you like what we're doing, I know so many of you chime in with a comment here and there, even if it's just a thumbs up. We really appreciate it. Um, we are getting so close to our 4,000 hours watched uh, in the last, uh, basically in the year is what you have to do. So once we get to that monetization, it's going to kind of open up some more stuff. And I'm super excited to, to get to that level. Here was Mark Man Esco. Nickname is considered PG-13. So we can't print it. That's uh, what they said. Uh, turning Japanese, mad, bad, and dangerous. So a uh, pretty cool truck here. Negative camber, Texas. And that is the photo we just saw right there. Uh, this mound right here. Um, if I remember correctly, this was probably shot at Texas Heat Wave. We have behind the scene photos from 98 or 99, thanks to Tim of NC Florida. And uh, Courtney shot some cool vehicles there, including uh, our friend Mitch Rawl, uh, that we used to work at Extensive many moons ago. My, my brother Mitch, uh, his Ram, back when they were Dodge Rams, was shot, I believe, in this same exact spot. Many trucks were. Uh, and it was kind of that rock pile. So uh, pretty cool. That kind of sticks out in my mind. Appreciate Tim from NC4 always sharing that stuff with us. And check that out. There's some gold for you. Inside the cab, a Kenwood Model 6009 head unit. EQ. Pretty cool stuff. All that old school stuff. <laughs> Many of us, man, we just we just dig it. We came from that era. Here was the uh, some of the shirts. I never had that shirt. Kind of when... The flame stuff was big. Immaculate reception that ties into the Steelers. I'm gonna keep this going here. Godmothers. I think that was a spinoff of Godfathers, of course. Uh, here is some of the reader's ride, so I'll kinda let you get a look at those. I wish I could mention everyone's name. Uh, these videos tend to do well, like if I'm about the 20 minute mark, which is still kind of long, but we certainly appreciate you guys for kind of rocking with us all the way through. Uh, it's definitely appreciated. This was always a cool photo here from the stage showing all the, the white t-shirts, some of the different uh, events around the country, and then street scene. So we know if you've been watching these from the beginning, we know it was street scene, S-E-E-N, uh, towards the beginning, at the beginning, the infancy of the magazine. Uh, a separate reality. Uh, so uh, you basically have a 92 Mazda, which was super clean. And then you have the 85 Blazer, which was uh, Charles McCarran. And uh, this was shot here, I think, in Tampa, if I remember correctly, by that fence. Uh, here you have 92 Extra Cab. Super clean. Kind of a little different style. 
So good stuff. Here you have the Dustin Haven truck I mentioned recently. I got to link up with Dustin and uh, get that done. And then here's a little bit different ad. We started to see Pro Hopper with that famous Ford Ranger that what uh, totally polished built. Street Savvy. So Sport Compacts. I saw a Saturn at Eastbound Get Down, a.k.a. EBGD. Trying to get Mike to change it to Eastbound Chill Down. But uh, EBGD, there was a Saturn there, uh, a wagon on Budnick Billets. It really brought me back. Check this out. Dylan Riddle of Ann Arbor. Dylan, if you're watching, chime in. Because that means you're probably... Damn. You're probably 25 years old. Wait, 24, 23? What year is it? Give or take, 22, 23 years old. That's how old we are. That's how much older we are from when we first got this in the mail, y'all. Crazy. Forbidden Dreams, Simply Choice. You got all kinds of cool stuff. Subversive, Deflated. There's the famous. You got a couple. Someone shared photos with us of uh, that truck. Of course, talked to uh, Gendro about it. Graffiti. Again, that was a Lance thing. And then the MIC, some of you guys have chimed in. Someone said, hey, the first time we saw a crew cut in one of the other ads, that was a good call out. Uh, pretty cool stuff there. Um, we just had Rob on and we talked about a lot of this stuff. But look at this. Dude, Van Diemen, he said, was custom painting these. Dude, you know, you know you're balling when you got freaking airbrushed toilet seats hanging on your wall. Does anybody have one of these? You know you're the shit when you do. You know what I'm saying? That means you were balling back in the 90s. And then Bobby Billiard, damn, yo. That S10, though. I'll take the I'll take the S10. I mean, that's the, that's how hard of a mini trucker I am, how hardcore. I take the S10, y'all. The grill, the wild horse, you know what I'm saying? Colorado, or excuse me, Godfather Customs on the back. So again, uh, rest of peace to Alex Hu, who shared a behind-the-scenes photo with us in the past. I really appreciate that. This is Ryan Fringley House's. 98 forerunner issue 94 of mini trucking magazine october 99 i'm gonna flash right now if you can please subscribe to the podcast uh well subscribe to the podcast via olp subscribe to the channel here it's gonna flash on your screen really appreciate that don't forget you can look down in the description and i have all of the features all of the miscellaneous details the cover details the editor at the time and the cover photo credit so it's a lot of time to do one of these, but uh, I enjoy doing it. And I thank you guys for always watching. Stay on the rise, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. Peace.